mounts and ashes of creation are going to be much more than just your typical MMORPG mounts. They're going to have their own core abilities, utility skills, and stats. They'll provide resistances, attacks, defense abilities, and charge abilities. And don't forget that there's going to be a wide variety of mounts to choose from that will fall into the categories of land mounts, aquatic mounts, gliding mounts, and flying mounts. If you want to earn yourself one of these majestic creatures, you may have to buy them from a vendor, breed them, or even possibly tame them in the wild. Mounts are no joke in Ashes of Creation, and they will play a core role in the game. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the ultimate mount guide for all of the mounts that we had access to in the recently concluded Alpha 1 test. I'm going to show you what they look like, show you their animations, but most importantly, run each of them through a couple speed tests, and that goes for land and water alike. It's important to keep in mind that Ashes of Creation is still in a very unfinished state, and this also goes for the mounts. Now, this video did take me a ridiculous time to put together, so if you guys end up enjoying it, I really do appreciate your subscription. Links to my Twitter and my Discord server will be below. Let's get right into it. There's no better way to start off the video than by running my shirtless Kalar Human Cleric through a couple tests so we have something to go off of. After scouting the roads of Vera, I found myself two T's in the road. One T would act as the starting line and the other as the finish line. It took my character over 2 minutes and 40 seconds to jog from one side to the other. I did not use his sprint. After that, I let him cool down at a beautiful lagoon where I found a rock and a geyser that would serve respectively as the start and finish line for a swim speed test. My character took around 15 seconds to complete the water course. Now let's get into the actual mounts, starting with the classic horse. The brown and white horses are both common mounts that are described as simple yet reliable steeds. They can reluctantly run faster for a short time. These mounts were sold for 500 gold at the Stable Master, but keep in mind that these prices are likely just placeholders for the time being. As you can see, the mounts each have their own hotkey bar, which will eventually be filled with their own special skills. But in the Alpha 1, the mounts really only had one ability, and that being a sprint. The other ability that you're seeing is a heal, and on some mounts it's actually called Regenerative Marrow. But these are unfinished, and they did not work or have any use in the Alpha 1. Let's get on to the speed test. The brown and white horse both took around 60 seconds on the land course to get from one side to the other with their base running speed. For swimming, it took them both around 30 seconds to swim from the rock to the geyser. Both horses appear to have a fairly decent jump height, and their sprint ability gives them a 40% increase to movement speed for 8 seconds at a time. It does not tell us the sprint cooldown, but it seemed to be around 28 to 30 seconds. The Armored White Stallion is an uncommon mount described as a quality steed trained for battle. It's a bit faster than usual. It goes for 1000 gold from the Stable Master. My guess is that this mount will likely have more HP than the common horses and may also have a couple combat abilities of its own. For the land speed test, the White Stallion only beat the common horses by around 3 seconds, with a finishing time of 57 seconds. When I did the swimming test, however, the Stallion took only 23 seconds to get to the geyser. That is 7 seconds faster than the common horse. For sprinting, the White Stallion gets a 50% increase to movement speed, so 10% faster than the common horse, and they get to sprint for 10 seconds as opposed to 8. The cooldown for the sprint was the same, being around 28 seconds. Next up is the Highland Ram, which is an uncommon mount described as a slow yet regal mount that can break into a quick charge if it pleases. It's sold for 1000 gold from the Stable Master. The Highland Ram took around 57 seconds to complete the land course, which is the same as the White Stallion. And on the water track, it also took around 23 seconds to swim to the geyser. When we get into the sprinting though, the Highland Ram gets an increase to movement speed by 75% for 8 seconds. This mount really knows how to sprint, however its cooldown is currently set to 40 seconds. When we start thinking about mount skills and using mounts in battle, having a quick but short burst of speed could serve its purpose. Next up is the Bear, an uncommon mount described as a slow mount that can make quick bursts of speed from time to time. It's sold for 1200 gold from the Stable Master. I'm assuming that the bear will have good HP and end up having some sort of claw attack if it ends up being one of the more combat focused mounts. 
The bear took around 57 seconds to finish the land course, but started to shine more on the water course by finishing in just 18 seconds, which is faster than the previous mounts, but slower than the player character. For sprint speeds, the bear has a bear charge, which increases movement speed by 100% for 5 seconds. So it beats the ram sprint speed, but dies out 3 seconds quicker. The cooldown for the bear's sprint is 30 seconds. Next up is the Brew Bear, selling for 1300 gold, 100 more than the regular bear. The Brew Bear is described as the same way as the regular bear, but there's an added line that says, equipped with two barrels of brew for obvious reasons. There's a bit of humor behind that, but I'm going to take a guess and say that this mount may offer some extra carrying space. The Brew Bear got the same time as the regular bear for land speeds finishing at 57 seconds, but for the water course it actually finished 3 seconds faster than the bear with a time of 15 seconds our new water record. The Brew Bear's sprint is the same as the regular bear with 100% increase for 5 seconds on a 30 second cooldown. Keep in mind that the speeds of these mounts are likely not final and some things may just be placeholders or even possibly mistakes. Now on to the deer, an uncommon mount described as a loyal mount of average speed that can run for a decent amount of time. The deer cost me 1500 gold. I'm not entirely sure if loyalty actually means anything significant in the game when pertaining to mounts, but I'm sure that Intrepid has something up their sleeve. For the land speed test, the deer is currently the fastest at base speeds as it finished the land course in 55 seconds. For the swimming test, it took 23 seconds to get to the geyser, which was the same as the ram and the stallion. The deer's sprint gives it an increase in movement speed of 50%, lasting 15 seconds, but the sprint is on a 40 second cooldown. This is the longest sprint duration up to this point, but it's not the fastest. Now it's time to get into some more of the funky mounts, starting with the day strider. The Daystrider is a rare mount and is described as a gentle beast with loping strides and great endurance. It has average speed, but it can move faster if it needs to. The Daystrider cost me 2000 gold from the Stable Master. For the land speed test, this lanky mount finished at around 55 seconds, so it's currently tied in first place with the deer for base running speeds. Swimming on the other hand was not really its strong point as it took about 30 seconds to complete the swim course, which is the same time as the brown and white horses. This mount seemingly has a pretty decent jump height which can be useful, and it can sprint for an increase of 50% to movement speed, which is the same as the white stallion and the deer, however the day strider can hold this sprint for 20 long seconds. The catch here though is that the sprint's cooldown is currently set at 50 seconds, a fairly long period of time to wait. We also have the Day Strider Mule, which is currently described exactly the same as the Day Strider, but this one costs a little more at 2200 gold. I would assume that when the game comes out, like with the Brew Bear, the Day Strider Mule may be able to offer some extra storage for your character. I could be wrong though. The Daystrider Mule has the same exact sprint and it also finished with the same times as the regular Daystrider for the speed and water tests. 55 seconds for land and 30 seconds for water. Next up is the Scal Runner, a rare mount described as a cold blooded mount with an average speed, but can oftentimes scurry much quicker if prompted. The Scal Runner sold for 2500 in the Alpha 1. This reptilian mount came in at 54 seconds for the land speed test, it is our new number 1. For the water race it finished with a respectable time of around 18 seconds, which was the same as the regular bear. As for sprinting, the scale runner gets an increase of movement speed by 75% lasting for 8 seconds, and this is on a 30 second cooldown timer. This sprint is currently the same as the highland ram. But this mount should move a bit faster than the ram because its base running speed is a tad quicker. Now on to one of my personal favorites, the Tidebreaker. The Tidebreaker is described as a playful mount that is a tad slower on land, but is a great swimmer. The Tidebreaker sold for 3000 gold from the Stable Master. Despite the description, the Tidebreaker finished the land speed test at 55 seconds, which is tied for the second fastest base running speed up to this point in the video. 
For the water speed test, as predicted, we have our new number one, as this playful otter finished the course in just 13 seconds. The Tidebreaker's sprint ability allows it to run at an increase of 50% to its movement speed for 10 seconds, which was the same as the Armored Stallion. However, the Tidebreaker beat the Armored Stallion by a little bit with its base running speed, so technically it's a little bit faster. The sprint's description doesn't tell us what its cooldown is, but it appears to be around 28 seconds or so, like many of the other mounts where it wasn't specified. Now onto the Cursed Charger, a rare mount described as a wild and unruly mount of average speed with a powerful jump, can sprint for a short time. This feline mount was 3500 gold at the Stable Master. For the land and speed test, the Charger finished with a hard to beat time of 52 seconds, our new number one for base running speeds. As for the water test, the Charger didn't seem too happy to be in there, but it made it to the geyser in 23 seconds, which was the same swim time as the White Stallion, the Ram, and the Deer. The Charger did actually seem to have a pretty decent jump, and for its sprint, it gets an increase of movement speed by 75% for 10 seconds, which is on a 30 second cooldown. Moving on to the Ram Hulk, a rare mount described as a heavily muscled beast that has decent speeds in all forms of travel and a quick charge to boot. The Ram Hulk sold for 5,000 gold from the Stable Master. Surprisingly, this mount tied the Cursed Charger with the current number one time of around 52 seconds for the land test. And for the swimming test, despite its bulky appearance, it was able to swim to the finish line in just over 16 seconds, losing to the Brew Bear by a mere one second. As for the mount sprinting speed, it gets an increase of movement speed by 60%, lasting for 10 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. Now we're entering into the epic mount category, starting with the Stag of Bows. This beautiful mount is described as a wise old mount with daddy issues. <laughs> I'm just kidding. With, with decent speeds and the ability to restore itself if injured. A few of the mounts are described as being able to heal themselves, so I'm assuming that the heal skill that we already see on the mount's skill bars is not necessarily even supposed to be there. The stag sold for 4,000 gold from the Stable Master, but I think they might have messed up that price, because judging by its rarity, it should be 5,000. For the land speed test, with its beautiful stride, the stag finished at 52 seconds. Its water speed was also respectable as it reached the geyser in around 18 seconds. This mount seems to have a pretty high jump, and its sprint gives it an increase of 50% to movement speed for 10 seconds, and this cooldown was not specified like some of the others, but it came back at around 28 seconds. All of these 28 second ones could very well actually be meant to be 30. Next up is the Armored Swiftclaw, an epic mount described as a fierce mount trained for war, decent speed with a leaping jump, and can run with long endurance. This raptor cost 5,500 gold from the Stable Master. Being a mount that's trained for war, we can probably assume that it will have some combat abilities such as a raptor claw attack and or a bite. For the land speed test, it finished at 52 seconds tied with the Stag, Ram Hulk, and the Charger. For the water course, the raptor finished in about 23 seconds. The raptor's jump is actually really noteworthy as it can jump super high, and this may in turn help with land traversal in certain areas, and maybe even in certain PvP situations. The raptor's sprint gives it an increase of 50% to movement speed, which lasts for 20 seconds. The sprint, however, is on a 50 second cooldown. Moving on to the Flail Runner, which looks very similar to the Scale Runner. The Flail Runner is an epic mount described as a cunning and fast mount, and it's sold for 5,500 gold from the Stable Master. According to the Ashes Wiki, when the game comes out, this mount will only be attainable by breeding two creatures through the animal husbandry profession. As for its land speed, this mount is our new number one with a finishing time of 50 seconds. This is four seconds faster than its lookalike, the Scale Runner, and two seconds faster than the mounts that were in the number one spot of 52 seconds. As for swimming, the Flail Runner finished in the same time as the regular Scale Runner at around 18 seconds. The Flail Runner's sprint, though, is currently set at an increase of 50% to movement speed for 10 seconds, which is slower than the Scale Runner. I feel like this may just be unfinished because I assume the Flail Runner would be at least as fast as the Scale Runner when sprinting, but who knows, maybe the armor is weighing it down for those bursts of speed. 
Now it's time to talk about one of the coolest mounts, the Tide Snapper. The Tide Snapper is an epic mount described as an aquatic beast that will merrily flop along on land, but put in the water and its speed is unmatched. This aquatic cutie costs 6,000 gold from the Stable Master. For the land speed test, as you would imagine, it didn't fare too well. I'm actually surprised that this guy made it off the beach as a baby. The Tide Snapper finished the land speed course with a whopping 2 minutes and 54 seconds. So 14 or so seconds slower than the actual player character's base running speed and a couple minutes slower than most of the other mounts. I still have hopes that some guild one day will attack a castle on the back of Tide Snappers. As for the water test, it more than makes up for its failures on land, as the Tide Snapper finished this course in just 7 seconds. This is currently the go-to mount for any long-distance water travel. As for the Tide Snapper's sprint, it does show 50% for 10 seconds, but the sprint does not activate when clicking on it when you're on land. If I remember correctly, when I activated the sprint on land and then immediately went into the water, I think I did get a boost to my swimming speed. Some of you guys might ask, well, why not activate the sprint in water? Well, the game actually considers sprint as a spell and you can't cast any spells in water. This will obviously change when the game comes out. Just as things started to get really interesting, it's time to go back to a horse called the Midnight Mare. The Midnight Mare is an elegant horse bred for pure speed, and it's sold for 7,500 gold from the Stable Master. If you're bored from seeing another horse, well, don't be bored anymore because the Midnight Mare is our new number one for base running speeds, as it finished the land course in a mere 46 seconds, four seconds faster than our previous number one, the Flail Runner. As for water, well, it didn't do quite as well, but it's still faster than the common horses as it finished the course in 23 seconds as opposed to 30. The Midnight Mare's sprint speed puts the other horses to shame as it gets an increase of 85% to movement speed, which is 35% faster than the Stallion, and it lasts for 10 seconds. This is currently on a 40 second cooldown. Now it's time to enter the realm of the legendary mounts, starting with the Shell of the Ancients. This mount is described as an ancient magical creature of Vera, it has good speed in land and sea. This mount sold for only 5,000 gold from the Stable Master, which is less than some of the epic mounts. For the speed test, this tortoise locked in with a quick time of 52 seconds. This tortoise might even beat a hare. <laughs> oh. For the water test, it actually takes silver away from the Tidebreaker, as it got to the finish line in 12 seconds, which is one second faster, but not as quick as the Tide Snapper. This is making me think that this mount may not actually be a tortoise, because tortoises cannot swim too well IRL. This mount also has a decent jump height, and its sprint speed gives it an increase of 50% to movement speed for 10 seconds. Like the Stag, it appears to be on that 28-ish second cooldown. Time to get creepy with the Boner Strider. <laughs> uh, how old am I again? The Bone Strider is a legendary mount described as, despite its reanimated state, this strider is docile as it was in life. It's a fast mount with the ability to heal itself if needed. The Bone Strider sold for 8,000 gold from the Stable Master. For the land speed test, this mount finished with a time of 50 seconds, so tied in second place. And in the water, it reached the geyser in around 23 seconds, making this mount faster than the day strider on land and in the water. The bone strider sprint, however, is the same as the day strider, giving it an increase of 50% to movement speed for 20 seconds, which is also on a 50 second cooldown. Next up is a legendary mount by the name of the Noble Warhorn. This mount is described as a mighty beast that's fast despite its immense strength. It can charge quickly and often. The Warhorn sold for 8,000 gold from the Stable Master. I'll take a guess and say that this mount is a good one to go into battle with, as it will likely be able to charge at players and it probably has a lot of HP. For the land speed test, this War Rhino completed the run in 48 seconds, only 2 seconds behind the Midnight Mare, our current number 1. Don't you dare underestimate the muscle. In the water, the Warhorn actually also did fairly well with a time of 18 seconds to get to the geyser. 
As for its sprint, it ties the bear with the quickest sprint time of an increase in movement speed by 100%, but like the bear, it only lasts for 5 seconds. The rhino sprint, however, is on a 25 second cooldown as opposed to the 30 seconds for the bear. Back to the reptiles with the legendary, beautiful, timeless terrapin mount. This mount is ascribed as a gnarled and wise old tortoise that will be a good companion on your adventures. The timeless terrapin sold for 8,000 gold from the stable master. Despite its non-aerodynamic form, the timeless terrapin was able to clock in at 50 seconds for the land speed test. In the water, it also proved its value as it finished the course in 11 seconds, which was one second faster than the shell of the ancients, but slower than the tide snapper. The timeless terrapin is one of the fastest water mounts that was in the alpha. As for its sprint, it gets the classic 50% for 10 seconds, which appears to be on that 28 to 30 second cooldown. Moving on to the understandably popular legendary mount called the Fox of the Pyree. This mount is ascribed as a cunning and inquisitive creature. It has exceptional maneuvering skills and is quite fast. This mount sold for 10,000 gold from the Stable Master. The Firefox finished the land speed test with a time of 48 seconds. So currently the Fox and the Warhorn are holding the number two spot behind the Midnight Mare. But there may be a couple challengers still coming up, so don't leave the video just yet. In the water, the fox was able to keep its flames alive and finish the water course in 23 seconds. Nothing really to brag about here. The fox of the Pyree does feel like it has great maneuverability, and its sprint gives it an increase of 60% to its movement speed for 10 seconds, which is on the 30 second cooldown. The fox of the Pyree is overall one of the fastest land mounts in the Alpha. Now on to the final two mounts that were available for purchase, but since you guys made it this far, I'm also going to give you guys a bonus one after. First up is the legendary Timbersuit Kirin, which is described as imbued with mystical ashes. This creature boasts a very fast speed and a bounding leap. It sold for 13,000 gold from the Stable Master. For the land speed test, you guessed it, the Timbersuit Kirin finished with a new record time of just 43 seconds. In the water, it also did fairly well, finishing the course in 18 seconds, which is not nearly the best, but it is faster than many of the other mounts. The Kirin also has a pretty high jump, and for its sprint, this is where it really separates itself even further from the other mounts. Kirin's swiftness increases movement speed by 100%, for 15 seconds. This is currently on a 60 second cooldown. This is by far the fastest mount in the game, and you'll be able to tell instantly when you get yourself one. It also is really good at leaping over enemy players in PvP. The other Kirin mount is also a legendary mount called the Shimmering Kirin. This one is described as elusive and rarely seen. This creature can travel very quickly throughout Vera. This Kirin also sold for 13,000 gold. Now for the land speed test, I actually clocked this guy in at around 44 and a half seconds. I feel like this could have been a user error when running the curved course, but it is certainly possible that the other Kirin is just slightly faster. When running the water speed test, I was actually quite surprised as the shimmering Kirin finished in just 11 seconds, tying the timeless Terrapin as the second fastest swim speed out of all of the mounts. As for its sprint, well, it doesn't quite match up with the Timbersuit Kirin. The Shimmering Kirin only gets an increase of 50% to movement speed for 10 seconds, but considering how fast its base running speed is, this mount is still one of the quickest in the game. Its sprint cooldown appears to be around 28 seconds. Now it's time for the bonus mount, and many of you guys guessed it, it is a flying mount by the name of the Eagle Mount. On the last day of the alpha, some of us were given flying mounts to try out, and whichever one you got is the one that you got. The eagle mount is certainly looking a lot like a hypocrite. <laughs> Hippogriff. I swear I'm done with the jokes. And it's described in the game as summon eagle mount. Obviously many of the descriptions for the mounts are not complete nor final. For the land running speed test, the eagle finished at 52 seconds, so on land it's still one of the faster base running speeds. When I did the course in the air though, the eagle beat the Timbersuit Kirin by 8 seconds, reaching the finish line in around 35 total seconds. 
when I ran the course again, but this time tried to follow the curves of the road like I did with the other mounts, the Eagle still finished with a great time of 37 seconds. Of course, keep in mind that when you are flying, you most of the time can go in a straight line to your destination. But don't let me forget to throw the Eagle into the water. To my surprise, the Eagle finished the water course in around 22 seconds. So it's not great, but it's still better than many of the other mounts. So in conclusion, the fastest way to get from point A to point B with a mount's base speed is with a flying mount. And in this case, it was with the Eagle mount, and I'm assuming that it's a hippogriff. As for the land mounts, the Timber Suit Kirin came in at number one with 43 seconds, followed closely by the Shimmering Kirin with around 44 and a half seconds, and then the Midnight Mare finished at 46. The other two cool land mounts that were not too far behind were the Fox of the Pyrie and the Warhorn at 48 seconds. Now it's also important to keep in mind that these mounts have those sprints that we talked about and that may change the time that it takes a land mount to get from one point to the other and the timber suit Kieran had that 100% increase in movement speed for 15 seconds and no mount even comes close to that. The other mounts that had the quick sprints were the noble warhorn and the bear which also got a 100% increase to movement speed but it only lasts for a mere 5 seconds so one day down the line we'll have to test and actually find what the fastest mount is to get from one point to the other with all of the mounts including their sprint times and of course for the water test the tide snapper came in first place with that seven second time followed by the shimmering kirin and the timeless terrapin which both posted 11 seconds and after that i believe the shell of the ancients was at 12 and then the tide breaker the otter mount posted 13 seconds and that'll be it for today's video thank you guys so much to those of you guys that made it to the end like i said this project just took a ton of time it was really hard to keep streaming and making other content on the channel while I was working on this. But it was a pleasure to make for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.